Hi guys, today I am going to finally be answering some of the questions that um, were asked of me in the video I did asking you guys to leave some questions for me to answer. So I have a few because I, it's going to be hard for me to answer them all in one video because one, there were a lot of questions and two, I have a tendency to ramble. So each question is probably going to be a little more in depth than just a yes or no kind of um, answer. So I just wrote down a few, I think I have about 10, 11 questions here. Um, some were like repeats. So um, obviously I didn't go through like the entire list kind of thing I just kind of um like I, I put some of the questions together since they were like similar themed type of questions so I'm just going to go down through these and answer them for you guys I hope you guys enjoy this video I want to thank everyone for leaving me some questions to answer hopefully um you guys enjoy these types of videos I feel like it'll give me a chance to kind of Get myself out there a little more i feel like i don't talk about myself much in my videos i just i don't really feel like um like with the videos i make like it's not really like me getting into my life when i am doing like say a bath bomb demo or something like that um i wouldn't mind starting to vlog but i don't really know where to begin as far as that goes because i'm not like super what's the word I'm looking for, entertaining, like, you know, my life today consisted of mainly filming videos, so, um, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll try doing a vlog sometime just to see how it goes, but, all right, I'm just gonna start him with the questions, because that's what this video is about, so the first question I have written down here is, and these are in no particular order, uh, but I have, do you plan your nail polish color on the product you do? Um, I do to an extent. Um, I, if it's something that, like, if I just, if I'm just sitting down to do my nails and I know, uh, what I'm doing next, I try to plan my nails out to somewhat of a color coordinating aspect. It doesn't happen all of the time, trust me. Uh, but I do try um, when I am like freshly starting with a new set of like nails. Um, but it's not all the time. So sometimes I like to, I love doing my nails. I'm not like super good at it. At least I don't think so. But I do really enjoy just trying out different things with them. Like currently, and I've had these for a while, um, so they're just kind of all gunked up. But currently I have on some Revlon nail polish. This peachy color um, was a Revlon nail polish. Um, one of those scented ones. And then on the tops here, I, I did kind of like a reverse French manicure and that glittery polish is a Madame Glam polish. So that's what I did with that. And I did that one for my Bath and Body Works Pretty as a Peach bath bomb demo. But I've had these nails since I did that. So I need to redo them. Um, tonight I am filming a shower jelly cutting video of my party on, which I have, um, been meaning to do for a while because I had like a little poll of what you guys wanted to see next. Um, so I'm probably going to paint my nails some sort of like neon yellowish color to match that since I need to redo them. So I do paint them to match when I can, but not all the time. Um, next we have, what is your full-time job? Um, my full-time job is, and without getting like super um, like telling you exactly, because I know there's some like crazy people out there. I, I don't want to tell you exactly where I work, but I'll tell you like what I do. And some of you guys will remember I was unemployed for a little while back. What was it last, this last summer, it would have been around that area. Um, I am back at the job I was at before. So I was there, I worked there where I work now. I worked there for about five years give or take, and I was fired. <laughs> um, no fault of my own. Um, I was in like a toxic 
very, very toxic environment as far as that went. Uh, I am not in that environment anymore, thank goodness. But um, I was, I worked in an office and the thing there is um, where I work, like you don't get paid as much. If you work in an office setting, as like an office administrator, you do not get paid the same amount as if you would work out on the floor in the warehouse. Uh, people who work out there get paid more. So I was working there for five years of my life in, in the office. I was a billing clerk and then I did other stuff as well after a while. Um, but I was working there for five years and left because I was fired. I was able to come back after five months. And since I didn't leave under any kind of like bad circumstances, oops, my hair. Um, since I didn't leave under any like negative circumstances or anything like that, um, they did hire me back on after my five months had passed. And I make more now just starting over there than I was making while I was working there for five years because I now work out in the warehouse doing more like physical labor than what I was doing kind of just sitting on my butt doing like clerical office work. So I do not miss working in an office at all. It's not really for me. It's something that I learned. Um, I like being able to move around. I am a mover. I like to constantly be in motion. I don't like to just sit somewhere for hours on end. I mean, sure it was nice being air conditioned and, you know, heated in the winter when it was cold, but I don't think I could go back to an office job. So now I work out in the warehouse and I started out working there when I first started that job. So, um, but I work in a different department now, so it's mainly um, women who do this job as opposed to when I first started, it was mainly men who did the job I did. When I first started there, I was driving like industrial powered equipment and stuff like that, which I'm not a huge fan of doing that either. It's just not something I like to do. Now I'm just like constantly walking. It's a walking job. I wear like this little headset. It talks to me. It tells me where to go, what to pick. I pick the product, I put it in a tote, and then it goes down the line uh, to the next zone is what they call. And then um, the next person picks what they need to pick until the tote is completely full of the product that the company uh, or store, I should say, purchased. So that is my current job. I guess you would refer to me as a selector. I used to do the same thing uh, pretty much the same similar thing when I worked for Delia's. Um, that was where I worked before. Um, I worked at their distribution center and that's what I would do. I would pick people's orders um, who would, you know, if you bought something from Delia's, the, the website or through the catalog, I would pick your order and send it off to the people who pack it and that kind of thing. And that's essentially what I'm doing now, except I'm picking um, like grocery kind of products like shampoos and body lotions and fun stuff like that that I love. So it's kind of like I'm shopping all day. Um, so and I'm making more. So I, I like it. I mean, of course, like any job, it sucks sometimes. It's not fun all the time. It's a lot of hours. I work a ton of hours and it can be very exhausting and things like that. Like, you know, it's not all peaches and cream, but definitely better than what I was originally doing. I'm more happier. My stress level isn't as high. My anxiety isn't as high as it was just being um, cooped up in such a tight little office with people bashing heads all the time. It just was not fun. So um, I definitely enjoy um, what I do now better. But um, I am like super burpy and I apologize for that. That's so disgusting. <laughs> um, so that's what I do as my full-time job. I am pretty much, I guess, like what you would call a selector. Uh, but yes, so YouTube is not my full-time job. I wish that it was, but it's not. Okay, I have a question. I was wondering how your dad was doing and if you are still getting those pennies from heaven. Um, 
yes, my dad is doing good. Uh, we don't go back to, he has two doctor's appointments not this coming week but the following week um so we will see then how things are going since uh, last time we were there but last time we were at the wound doctor and this is for his bed sore um he's still wearing the vacuum therapy thing that he has to wear um however the nurses that come by and change that every two days um, they are saying that it's looking good, it's healing. Um, when we've been going to the wound doctor, they said it's looking good, it's healing. They started using collagen or something on it to speed along the process. And it seems like that's really helping as well. Um, so I am hoping and praying that this next time we go to the wound doctor, maybe they'll allow him to finally not have to use the wound vac anymore. Um, since it is closing up so well and so faster than what like anyone really expected expected so I'm so thankful for that now he also does go to um the hip doctor um because he did have a hip replacement um which was one of the reasons he was bedridden for so long um and he still has a scar there that is it's healing but there's still a very large scar there because that's where they you know cut him open to um do his hip replacement and there is the scar is not completely healed so we've been going there and um you know just getting that addressed because that did end up getting an infection so um we go there um this the day after no the day before the wound doctor appointment so hopefully that is healing up too but i mean as far as him doing he's doing he's doing very good so i'm very thankful for that and yes i am still finding pennies um i just i get so so just ecstatic when i find them it's just like i just can't believe it sometimes um the very last one i found was I'd say a week ago, maybe. Um, yeah, it would have been a week ago. Um, I took my father out to Walmart to get his hair cut. And while I was there, I did a little bit of shopping and he wasn't finished his haircut. So I took um, what I my purchases out to my car to put in my trunk and then go back in and wait for him. And as I was walking by, um, if you're familiar at Walmart, they kind of have those little like claw machines, little like arcade kind of um, game machines. My mom loved to play the claw machine. It was always her favorite thing to do. Anytime she was around one, she would play one because she was really good at them. And then depending on what it was, she'd either like give me the stuff or if it was like stuffed animals, she'd give them to my cousin's children. Um, one, one time she won me like a Starbucks cup out of one that had a Starbucks gift card in she loved playing them it was just something that you know brought her joy so as I was getting ready to walk straight past them I just had this thought in my head like wouldn't it be such a sign from my mom if I found a penny in front of this claw machine that I was about ready to walk by I found a penny in front of the claw machine I about pooped my pants. I couldn't believe it. Like I had to do a double take when I was like looking down because it looked like the floor. It was like as dark and like, you know, as the floor was. And I just went to pick out. I was like, oh my God. Like, I couldn't believe it. Like what, what are the odds? Like that's not just coincidence. Like 99.9% .9 of the time, I can't even, I can't even say that it would be coincidence when I find pennies because that's just something is happening there is a reason that I am finding them it's just they're just it's so weird every time I find one it's under the most weird circumstances like that like I was thinking it it's my mom it was one of my mom's favorite things to do you know what I mean it's just it's, it's just amazing and I still can't believe it to this day when I'm just finding them so yes I am still finding them um, one of my next questions is, are there any bath bombs you didn't like? Any that made a horrendous mess or didn't smell as it should? Like any that were disappointing? Um, yes, there have been some. Um, 
Let's see, the Love Struck, the Lush Love Struck. I was not a fan of that scent. I found it just smelled like burnt uh, plastic or something like that. Um, Lush Golden Slumbers stained my tub pretty bad. Uh, Metamorphosis was actually pretty gross as well. Um, so there are, there are some bath bombs that I haven't liked completely. Um, but there are also aspects of some that, you know, might not like the scent, but it might like something else about it. And that's with like any bath product, doesn't matter who it's made by or anything like that. Um, it's all a matter of personal preference. Like just because I like something doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to like it. And it's hard for me, I think, to be negative because I'm not a negative person. So I'm not super negative about things. Like I try to find the positive in everything. So even if like I didn't like the smell of something, if the color, like if it made beautiful bath water and it was moisturizing, I can look past some things, you know what I'm saying? So I just, I always try to find the positive in everything. Um, but that's just how I am. So that's what I'm saying like just because I like something doesn't necessarily mean that you will and the same with like maybe you love something that I'm just kind of like mm, not really for me so it's just all a matter of personal preference when it comes to um, how someone feels about a product uh, but yes there have been some that just weren't necessarily my cup of tea probably wouldn't repurchase again but that's just as I said, personal preference. How much do you usually spend on bath products a month? That is a good question that I am scared to find out. No, I seriously don't really keep tally of it. It's just, I am thankful enough that I'm able to purchase what I want. Like if, if the kitchen comes out with products that I want and I need to order each day, um, my boyfriend is perfectly okay with it. He doesn't even question it. It's like, okay, well, you need to get that. You know what I mean? Mainly because it's for my YouTube channel. Obviously, I can't demo this stuff if I'm not buying it. You know what I mean? So it's it's for my channel. And also, you know, I we both work full time. You know, it's our money. We're able to spend it how we want to. And I like to spend mine buying bath products for my YouTube channel. So I can't say like what exactly what I spend because it varies. Sometimes there's stuff that I want to get. Sometimes there's not that kind of thing. Uh, but definitely I spend more, I think, um, towards the holidays just because, you know, the Lush collections get larger than like they come out with more stuff and things like things like that. So. Uh, but yeah, I don't know exactly how much I spend, but definitely a lot. <laughs> I've got a question of, been with your boyfriend a long time. Do you talk about getting married? If so, when? Um, how long? As And also, like, about doing a boyfriend tag. Um, I don't think my boyfriend's down <laughs> for doing a boyfriend tag. He's just not into being on camera, which is understandable. Not everyone is comfortable in front of a camera. I have gotten more comfortable. I know when I first started YouTube, I wasn't super comfortable in front of the camera. And now I don't really have a problem sitting here and just talking forever. <laughs> but before, like I used to be, and I still am a little bit to this day, like I like being in, like while I'm filming, I like being alone. Well, my dog's in here actually. Um, but as far as like my boyfriend, like I used to be like where I didn't even want him to like listen to me. Like, could you go downstairs? You know what I mean? I was just uncomfortable like talking to the camera in front of him, if you know what I'm saying. And I still get that way sometimes. Um, but for the most part, I'm not like that anymore. But yeah, he's, I don't think he's comfortable enough like being in front of the camera. Um, I'm trying to get him more involved though in my videos as far as like, um, I wanted him to do his own, like, like to pick out his own products for a cocktail video, like what he would choose. So I could do a cocktail of like what he would choose as a cocktail. So we're probably going to do that. Uh, but as far as him being on camera, I don't know if he'll ever want to be. Um, we've been together probably, I 
think this this month was our 17th or 18th year together um we are engaged we've been engaged i believe seven years now maybe maybe a little longer than that um but we're not like huge into like needing to get married right away obviously i mean we've been been together for so long it's like we've been married um to us nothing would change aside from my last name absolutely nothing else would change and i'm not i'm not rushed like i don't feel rushed into it since we've been together for so long for me marriage would change absolutely nothing as far as you know when we get married who knows probably sometime soon um i'm obviously not really interested in having like a large wedding or anything like that we'll probably honestly just go to a courthouse and sign some papers to get a marriage license um especially since and since you know my mom has passed not have her there like i don't even want i don't even want like a traditional kind of wedding like that since she can't be a part of it so um it's not it's not like a huge deal to me and it never has been so thankfully you know that's not something that completely hurts my feelings and, uh, but yeah it, it's gonna happen one day one day my my name will change and then it'll be a complete mess of having to call like every place I get a bill from and having to change my last name you know what I mean so it's just it's gonna be a pain in the butt more than anything in my opinion so um let's see we have do you make money from youtube videos yes you do make money from youtube videos you used to not um back when i first started youtube there was um you weren't able to i think unless you had so many subscribers and then you were once you had so many subscribers you were allowed to um fill out a form for the Google AdSense to receive monetization in your videos. But you had to have so many subscribers. So back when I first started YouTube, I did not make money. Um, I was not able to because, you know, I didn't have the amount of subscribers you needed to get monetization. Now, anyone can get monetization. It doesn't matter how many subscribers you have. You could have zero subscribers and still able to put monetization Google ads on your video. As far as the ads go, um, the cost of them changes throughout the year. Uh, during like Super Bowl, during like the holidays, ads cost more, so you make more. Uh, but the, the, the amount you make, it fluctuates and it's not the same for everyone. It depends on so many different factors. Uh, your views, how long people are watching, things of that nature. So it just, it's not a consistent thing thing all the time and I make I make decent money enough that it's it's helping me it's helping me be able to buy um, my products to do my demos and stuff like that it is not enough to quit your job though um, the people that are able to do YouTube full-time are the people that have millions of subscribers and get millions and hundreds of thousand views on their videos on like a daily or weekly basis um me as even getting close to a hundred thousand subscribers and thousand pretty well averaging thousand so views on each video it is not enough to quit my job so if anyone thinks that you're going to become rich off of making youtube videos uh no uh you gotta be up there with the likes of like nikki tutorials and jenna marbles and graveyard girl and people of that caliber but yes i i do make money on youtube as well as pretty much everyone who makes videos is making something at least so it just it just depends on like i said your your views and you know how long people are watching your video kind of thing so yes let's see our next question do you buy most of the products um and subscription boxes out of your own pocket or do you get sponsored gifted items or even revenue to youtube um you use towards more products etc so yes, I do purchase a vast, vast, vast majority of the products that I show. I buy all of my Lush, 
Lush has never sent me anything for free. Um, be pretty awesome if they ever did, but I don't think they do that for anyone. Um, they're such a large company. So I buy all of my Lush products. I buy all of my Witch Baby products. They have never sent me anything. Um, I buy all of my Moon's Harvest. I think Moon's Harvest sent me two things before. Um, but um, as far as the smaller companies go, a lot of them do send me their products for free. Um, let's see, as far as subscription boxes go, I have gotten a lot of them for free as well. I think I paid for a couple of my um, Japan um, snack food boxes when I was doing those. Um, but yes, I do, I do get a lot of products free from uh, bath companies, uh, which is one of the great aspects of having a YouTube channel is being able to um, review things for companies. It's just super fun to be able to try out different products. So for the most part, um, everything else I purchase with my money. And I, I buy a lot of Lush, so Lush has got a lot of my money. Uh, but yeah, there are some that do. What made you start doing bath bomb demos uh, videos on YouTube? Why did you start doing YouTube videos? I started doing YouTube videos uh, when I first started, it was yard sale hauls. I was mainly interested in doing yard sale hauls. And back when I first started doing YouTube, um, it was, I, I went on YouTube and I searched for yard sale hauls and there was like none. Like people, people weren't doing them. It wasn't really a thing. And back then, I don't know if any of you guys remember like Live Journal, but they had different groups. They had a thrift, they had a thrift store kind of group on there and people would just like post pictures of their thrift store finds. And pictures were kind of like the first hauls of, of the internet, in my opinion. Like, you know, you would go shopping, you'd take a picture of what you bought and just like share it online. So I would share on LiveJournal as well as a website called Laundromatic.net. If there's anyone out there who remembers that, hello, because I was huge on Laundromatic um, ever since like 2001 until it kind of just disappeared. Um, but I, I did a lot of showing my, my hauls on there as far as like my yard sale hauls. So I wanted to start doing YouTube videos showing, showing my yard sale hauls like as a video on YouTube. So that's how I really started with my YouTube uh, channel was doing yard sale hauls because I wanted to share those. Um, I, I did lush I did lush demos back then too and I deleted all of them and I hate myself for that but so I deleted all of my videos and I wish that I wouldn't have because it would be so much fun to like watch them now but I did do lush demos back then um, as well as the yard sale hauls and then it just kind of I started um, well I kept doing yard sale hauls and then I started putting up um, lush demos again and then I just kind of started getting back into that so and that's like where I am now currently I've I still do my yard sale hauls and things like that but um, the bath bomb thing kind of took over uh, but it's it all started with my yard sale hauls so that's that's why I started I wanted to share my I just wanted to share my yard sale hauls with the world. <laughs> Why did you choose Xper for a username and is there a reason? Um, not a huge reasoning behind it. Xper was always like a name I used um, just online, like on message boards and stuff like that for years. And it just kind of, when I signed up for Google that day when I wanted to make my yard sale haul. It's just what I put in because it's just the, the username I had been using for so long. Um, obviously I love cats. That's, that goes along with it. Um, Purr is also the name of a CD by Dancehall Crashers. I was really big into Dancehall Crashers when I was younger. I still like Dancehall Crashers. Um, they have a CD called Purr. Um, as far as the X goes, I've always been pretty well straight edge my whole life. I don't smoke. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. I don't drink and I don't do drugs. So um, the X was just kind of a part of that when I when I chose like my name as that I was using on message boards and stuff like that so um I've just been using it ever since so it's just it's been with me for so long that I just stuck with it <laughs> 
I mean, my I could have that day, that day that I started YouTube, I could have put, I could have wrote in SpaghettiOs29656836 as my username, and that could be my username right now. So I'm kind of thankful that I just used Xper. <laughs> so that is pretty well. Um, some 10, 10 questions. Like I said, I don't know how long this is. It's probably getting on the lengthier side. So I'm going to stop it there. I will probably do like a part two and answer some more questions. I will use obviously some questions from that video, but if you'd also like to add ones down below this one, I can keep doing these if I keep getting questions that I can answer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video though. Maybe you learned some things about me that you might not have known, but I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.